We've talked before on this channel about how I'm not the biggest fan of the Slanesh multi-model chariots. However, the Slanesh single entity chariot, the exalted seeker chariot, I am a huge fan of for a number of reasons, especially as a mount for the Herald of Slanesh Lord or the Alluris Hero. Uh, especially the Herald of Slanesh uh, Lord, though. Today, this replay from Trader GG is going to be taking Slanesh against Kislev. Got a Lore of Slanesh. Uh, Herald on the Chariot, 300 Weapon Strength, Anti-Infantry Armor Piercing, Poison Attacks, of course, with Magic Damage, 100 Speed, uh, 85 Charge Bonus, gets doubled when charging into the side or rear, and most importantly, perhaps of all, uh, making this one of the best Chariot Lords in the game, even post-integration, will probably still hold that title, is this trait right here, Perfect Vigor. So, for those of you guys who don't know, Vigor is massive, it essentially is the measure of how tired your unit is, when your unit gets low on Vigor, it suffers significant debuffs to speed, uh, even armor at the higher levels, uh, other traits as well. I think charge, I'd have to look again. I don't, <laughs> actually forgot to check before this video, but it's very important, especially for a unit like a Chariot. And charging also uses up the most Vigor of any action a unit can take next to shooting. So Chariots tend to run out of Vigor very quickly. Um, especially if they're being aggressively microed like fast single entity chariots like this will. So that perfect vigor is massive, especially in a long domination game. Uh, for the rest of the build, just an absolute spam of marauders to begin with. We've got five hell scourges, five spears, and four uh, sword marauders in reserve, four seekers, four hell striders, one more anti infantry marauder, and four furies. For the Kislevian opponent here, I switch with Lore of Tempest. Uh, we've got some winged lancers. Five Armored Kossars and five Kossar Spears. So just going with a saturation of small arms fire. Definitely pretty smart. A single War Sled in Reserve. Patriarch, a couple Griffin Legions, a couple Zar Guards, a Wing Lancer, Snow Leopard, and another Kossar. So let's jump in and watch. And see what kind of work this Chariot can get up to. Obviously, the sort of wide shooting is good for a number of factions going up against Slanesh. So somewhat expected to see. At the same time, the Chariot can be very effective here, as long as it can operate safely away from enemy cavalry. Uh, primarily in this matchup, obviously, the bear cab you have to worry about. Thankfully, that fast speed means you can outrun pretty much all heavy cavalry in the game. Uh, there are, will be some light, uh, sort of high-tier light cavalry, right? Post-integration, like uh, Great Stag Knights and others that may be able to catch you with speed debuffs. But even still, at 100 speed, this Chariot can outrun almost any cavalry in the game in most situations. Uh, not to mention if they do get in contact, it gets an attack with the poison, and yes, it, it's just amazing. So definitely the best Slanesh Chariot, and yeah, overall, like I said, one of the best single model uh, Chariot Lords we've ever seen. You know, I think of other very strong caster Chariot Lords, like Cetra, for example, and in many ways, this Herald of Slanesh on this Chariot is better than Cetra, that faster speed, uh, great lore of magic, although it's arguable what's better. We've got wing lancers charging immediately, just hammering into these marauders here. Against some early disruption, the charge into the hell scourge just won't do as much. That melee defense does help them hold somewhat there, but the lower defense certainly of the anti-infantry marauders does allow them to get hammered a bit there. Islev just setting up in a nice wide stance. They're not fully on the objective, but the marauders are going even wider. In my opinion, and Trader GG, you can comment down below, let me know what you think, but I might have taken the uh, Hell Striders in place of the Spear Marauders in this initial build and then used the Spear Marauders as reinforcement, but either way works relatively well. Definitely some heavy saturation of fire coming in from the Kossars and the Armored Kossars here. They got their pistols out as the Slanesh lads charge on through. Let's check in with the Chariot Lord. Still just chilling in the back for the time being, looking for an opportunity to strike. Charging in the front will do a decent amount of damage, but especially charging in the side or rear. Ooh, it looks like we've got a Hawks of Misha from the Ice Witch there. That is going to do a substantial amount of damage. Some people have been talking about this recently against Slanesh and other low armor factions, and I definitely see something here. I think I need to try this out a bit more for myself, but does absolutely wreck two units of Marauder Infantry, so pretty decent there. Uh, I don't remember exactly how much the spell costs, but Slanesh suffering heavy losses to the Marauders already on a number of fronts, just being completely pushed back. This uh, right flank, though, of Slanesh is starting to fold in. Chariot getting into action. 
Starting to get some quality damage on these armored Cossars here. Stationary somewhat for the time being, but soon we'll start to ping pong around effectively. And that's the biggest thing with these Slanesh Chariots. Again, if you can get a, a charge like down the side of an infantry unit, that's really the best. Because you can hit like the entire unit on a single charge animation pretty much and just do a heinous amount of damage. But uh, also charging in the rear, quite effective as well. We don't have the uh, blood DLC yet, so we can't see like the HP damage done just purely visually. We have to actually keep the health bars up. You can see there, just a single charge does a pretty substantial amount of HP damage. Blizzard being called down there on those Marauders does a decent job. Honestly, I might just stick to the Hawks of Misha in this matchup, seeing how effective that was. I uh, don't... I'd have to check the cost. I guess as we watch this Chariot Maraud through, we can actually look at the cost here. 13 wins of magic? Eh, reasonably expensive. I'm not really sure about that. Yeah, for the amount of damage that it caused, hard to say. But focus is not on that. You can see this background fight is definitely happening. You know, there's Marauders and Cossars scrapping all over the field. But it's, uh, the whole time this Chariot has just been riding through. Up to 61 kills so far. We're starting to see some Seekers get deployed as support to come in here and uh, sort of elite shock, try and clean up some of these weakened units. Uh, a little bit of fire, nice lash to help disrupt those armor Cossars, deal some damage as well. Another Hawks of Misha gets cast and does finish off some more of those Marauders. In terms of captures, both players not really playing the captures too much right now, just going all in on the battle right now. But we'll keep it close here. Cavalry now going to try and pursue the Herald. But of course, as long as she has a lane to get through, we will be able to continue on her way and just ride straight through the back of those Cossars, right around this little, uh, this little uh, stone. I want to call it a hut, but it doesn't actually have a root. You know what I mean. This little structure here. The uh, Seekers do come in. Sweet Sorrow refreshes the vigor of all units on the field, so not just... Herald, but everything else too that's left will be getting that sweet bigger refresh. You can see there, Marauder still winded, should be ticking up. Uh, actually, just stayed winded. Interesting, they must have been exhausted before and still suffering significant losses. But Herald coming through, and from my own experience in both in multiplayer and campaign, the Herald on the chariot, like the single model chariot in tandem with Seekers and Heart Seekers and the Slanesh Cavalry in general does work quite well because like you side charge with the fast chariot it's hard to react to in time because it's so fast if your micro is on point right as slanesh you can si uh, charge in the side sort of force him into a, a blob and then charge what used to be the front with your seekers it now counts as the side because the cossars have turned to face the chariot that just charged him in the side and you can very quickly kind of one two punch shock units off the field and just do an incredible amount of damage even to like heavily armored, defensive, relatively high tier units. But right now, other than the chariot, things are still just going pretty badly for Slanesh. I mean, this one unit of Seekers did come in here, getting some pretty good work done, but the saturation of range fire is still really hard for Slanesh to deal with. Greater GG here is uh, now getting out capped in the center. He has briefly got a head on a two cap and is almost a thousand victory tickets, but still. So moving into the second phase of the battle now, as Slanesh is. Somewhat decisively lost this, but Slanesh plays well from behind in domination, of course. And let's see right now the Herald just pulling back, trying to get some reinforcements on the field. If we could see army damage value, I bet Slanesh would be pretty far behind right now. Unfortunately, we cannot in replays, but let's see. There's still not really any direct counters for this Herald of Slanesh. There's no, uh, I mean, other than just mass shooting. There's no light cavalry to try and contest. There's no bear cavalry for elite anti-large. Like, even the Patriarch, I mean, I guess you don't really need the AP, but the extra HP, certainly, and mass of the bear would help. Extra weapon damage as well. But uh, these calves overextended here. Griffin Legion, Winged Lancers, both taking some hits from the Seekers. Chariot wheels up and around here. This is not good for the Patriarch. Getting surrounded by Seekers, one of the worst things, because a lot of them are going to be getting that devastating flanker attribute. Meanwhile, the Seeker gets a nice side charge through there, immediately switches target. This is pretty crisp chariot play right here. This is what you want to be doing is uh, basically as soon as you make contact, switch targets, right? As soon as you punch through a unit, switch targets, ride through, reposition, find another way to like rear or side charge preferably, and just keep moving as much as you can. 
Greater GG has been doing a pretty good job of that after that sort of initial uh, early engagement where he had a lot of infantry to micro. Once they all died, his micro was able to be prioritized on the chariot, as it often does for myself. Uh, now is doing quite well. The cavalry, though, getting uh, frostbitten, significantly slowed here. That Locust of Grace is an ability that the Herald of Slaanesh has. Very good against the mortal factions. Obviously, physical resistance, physical resistance is not super applicable against demonic factions. I mean, the melee defense helps in all aspects, certainly. But again, especially against mortals, that physical resistance does come in quite handy. Now moving in here, more Seekers trying to, again, sort of form a mobile hammer and anvil with Harold. Harold punches through. Quite a few Kislev units getting the Byer Blood passive, which is rough. They're going to continue to hold this objective just fine. But at the same time, they should take more damage and may even shatter once that wears off. So quite a few of these units are now sort of on a timer. Will shortly be fleeing the battlefield. These Seekers can also come through and help kind of clean this up a little bit here. More Elstriders coming in. More Marauders up here. Marauder Spears just holding ground up here. Uh, sleds finally being deployed. Probably should have brought the Sleds out a little bit sooner, to be honest. They're just so, so strong right now. And even with just one, you do want to develop it early. You can. More Chariot Charges from the Herald. Let's check in on the kill count. Up to 268 kills. And really, again, no... Uh, direct looming threats uh, in this matchup. This is probably the best matchup, I would say, for the, the Herald on the Chariot, but even against um, Cathay can be pretty decent as well. You have to be a little bit careful of big, scary dragon folks. Um, you know, dragon siblings, if you will. Uh, it can also be okay against Zinch, although mass shooting can be pretty painful. Nurgle, Perhaps, although you do have to be pretty aggressive, and Nurgle units tend to have a lot of HPs, so it does take quite a bit more time to get through them in some situations. But generally, anytime you can use Herald on the Chariot and not face uh, a lot of big, scary, fast monsters, and you're guaranteed to face infantry that you have to fight, like quality infantry that you're going to have to take down, it's definitely a good option. Looking forward to using it against uh, like dwarfs. And more game one and two factions in the future. I'm sure it'll be an excellent pick in those matchups, even in campaign, to be honest. I just recently finished a, a Slanesh modded campaign for fun for myself. And uh, yeah, they, I had actually a couple of heralds on Slanesh that I chose to just keep as heralds uh, on their chariots rather than turn them into keepers of secrets because I just love the chariots that much. Probably, I mean, it's always been the best Slanesh chariot, unquestionably. And probably just one of my favorite units overall in the game. Things are looking pretty tight, though, in terms of points. Kislev has been able to hold this center objective. The chariot's still online, still marauding through whatever infantry tries to come in and reinforce. And that is ultimately going to be an issue for Kislev. The question is, can Slanesh come back and recap these objectives in time to actually win? Cavalry is definitely winning the engagements. It's just, will it be fast enough with enough capture weight? to maintain right now here Harold getting a little bit caught up the snow leopard okay so this is actually a great counter I was thinking uh yeah the 100 speed with frostbite anti-large um yeah good attack means that the Herald is in trouble the vigor this is where it comes into play in particular the perfect vigor trying to avoid a unit that has basically the same speed um I think yeah it's obviously the Herald's gonna be fresh but Snow Leopard, if we look here, is uh, still fresh as well. So it should be the same speed. Basically, it just has to not hit its charge animation, and the Herald should be able to stay away. But here, it gets bogged down, and the Hell Striders, just the very low mass of the Snow Leopard working it against it there, and low HP now as it uh, starts to take hits from the anti large of the Hell Striders. Very bad for the poor Frost Kitten. Here comes the Herald. Again. Kind of forces the Cossars to turn, and then you get the two punch of the Seekers coming in, just shocking the unit, finishing them off. Very, very brutal combination. Is left definitely feeling the pain at this point. Uh, this number three objective almost capped Seekers being cavalry will cap slower than infantry, about half the speed of infantry. Uh, can it get capped in time, though? And victory is imminent for Kislev if Trader GG can't rest both of these objectives basically like right now. So... 
we'll see in the center these cavalry doing their best to just hold Kislev off of the objective but we still got a handful of armored Kossars with by our blood this ice witch also just lost by our blood so she's now gonna route as well characters on horseback I want to say count the same as infantry I would need to double check that for capture weight they definitely need to get her out of the zone as quickly as possible as it's just Slanesh Cavalry trying to cap here. There's no infantry for them. More Seekers going to ride over, though. It's razor close right now. Gizlev up to 4,000, almost 4,800 points. Whereas Slanesh here, just barely over 3,000 now. 3,100 ticking up. But uh, the uh, Ice Witch actually gets shattered here by the Hellstriders, and final charge. I mean, I say final charge. Kislev is going to do their best to counterattack and recap, but it does look like Slanesh was just able to squeeze out the three cap and get into a position to secure this game just in time with 160 tickets to spare, so extremely close. And uh, the chariot still fully operational, full speed, full armor, full charge, full attack, full everything because of that perfect vigor. And how many kills? Now, 400th kill right there on that charge. Just a beauty. A thing of absolute beauty. Oops, there's cavalry. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, perhaps now is the end. If the Herald gets caught in this unit of cavalry, but it looks like as the cavalry kind of start to move, she's able to escape as well, get back to the Hellstriders. Hellstriders and Seekers can now turn around and start to help. Looks like the Kislev player just throws in the towel there, having been recapped and yeah I, I think they had a pretty low chance of coming back and, and recapping one of those objectives but excellent game to trader gg 421 kills super dank for the herald of slanesh almost 4,000 damage value 42,000 total damage dealt and most of that is with the chariot right like there was definitely some lashes of slanesh being used um but it's not like before where you could generate this amount of value just with pendulums that was broken right now you actually uh, do have to use the chariot effectively and you can with the changes to collision damage this thing is better than ever and definitely an excellent option in a number of matchups uh, i like both lore of shadows and lore of slanesh for different situations lore of shadows pit of shades on maps with a lot of choke points is really good for punishing those choke points and just generally punishing a blobbed up infantry on captures and such on more open maps like this i can see slanesh and the lash just because it's a little bit cheaper you can just kind of spam it around and get those melee attack buffs across the map um, on your various units, but uh, yeah, I mean the rest of the Slanesh build is largely going to struggle Some of the cavalry may do okay. Some of the spears also trade relatively cost-effective uh, Yeah, seekers a few of them were resummoned multiple times, but still definitely generated some great value Like I said work super well in tandem with the uh, the herald there Hellstriders also just super awesome in this matchup. Do a great job against all the kids left cavalry and chariots and whatnots. The Fury is doing an okay job. Didn't really highlight them too much, but they paid for themselves. Also love the pick of the Ice Witch here. I think she's very solid with summon and just other other attributes make her very good. I love, love the pick of Hawks and Misha as well. I have to try that out for myself. Uh, winged Lancers end up being pretty cost effective. The Kossars generally do pay for themselves as well. Uh, for Kislev, I mean, a lot of their units pay for themselves. The Sleds, not so much. Nice to see that. Griffin Legion, I also would like to be just a tad better, and then they would be really good in this matchup, I think. But uh, I think they just need more armor and need to be a tiny bit cheaper. The Zargard do pay for themselves, which actually surprises me on some level, but also doesn't. But uh, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Definitely my favorite. One of my favorite units for Slanesh overall, and definitely the best chariot, unquestionably. If you did enjoy this, if you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification every time I upload a new video. You'll be notified. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.